y'all, Sai here. So I've been commissioned to make something I've never made before. And it is a, like a cabinet that holds a gun. And then it has a sign on the front and you can slide down the sign to get access to the gun. So I drew up a little tiny sketch and then husband drew it up into some better plans. And then I still adjusted them a little bit. But that's what I'm going to do. I used the panel saw to cut up one half inch birch plywood into manageable sizes. Then ripped pieces down to size on the table saw. And also on the miter saw. I sanded the fuzzies off of all the sides. Then glued and brad nailed the box together with the help of my speed square. Then reinforced it with some more nails and I had the box. I added my logo to the back with happy anniversary and a verse that the customer chose. It is Psalm 119, 114, and it says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield, I hope in thy word. I also added a little personal note that the customer requested. For the front part of the case, which was going to be a routered sign, I chose silver maple. I had this three inch or so thick slab that was about four feet long, so I resawed it. Then I ran those pieces through the planer. The customer wanted a live edge, so I took one resawed slab and using double stick tape, I taped it onto a pine board and used the table saw to cut a straight edge. I had to leave the blade guard up because it was so thick doing it this way and it wouldn't run through there otherwise. And the double stick tape worked great and the wood released from it very easily. I did the same thing with the second resod slab and then they were ready to be glued together. It looks like Gibbs was watching me, but also a little bored with what I was doing. But I was having fun. Then I edge glued them together and I clamped them and I added some weight to keep them from popping up. When it was all dry, I tried to use my hand plane to smooth things out. I tried adjusting it and stuff, but I just don't know enough about the thing to use it properly. So I switched to the belt sander and that worked well. I removed most of the bark, but left just a little bit to add to the live edge. I did sand it all smooth and I think it looked really cool. I cleaned up the ends with a jigsaw, but didn't make them perfectly straight because the live edges aren't perfectly straight. I played with the design a little bit and I printed one off that they liked using the Rapid Resizer program. I was able to print off the exact size I wanted to fit the area. Then I used lacquer thinner and a spoon to transfer the toner from the printing to the wood. And this technique won't give me a perfect crisp transfer, but it will give me what I need to do the routering. Wally was all excited about a fly buzzing around.
See how the image isn't crisp, but it shows where I need to router everything. It was looking pretty good to me. I also learned a new way to apply polyurethane. Someone sent me an email with a video on this technique. You take a dry brush and you put a very thin coat of poly over the entire thing. And after it dries, you sand it and you apply another coat the same way. And you do this about three times or more and it leaves a pretty and protective surface. Next, I was ready to start routering. First, I had to look at it and gather my thoughts on how to do it. Then I turned on my little cap light and was ready to go. I routered every area that was black. I use a 1 8 inch spiral down cut bit for the larger areas inside of the letters and the lines outside of the letters. And I used a 3 32nds router bit for the tips of the letters where it gets narrower and for the other little lettering. I'll speed this up a bit while I explain what this sign says. It is in Greek and the large letters say Mulan Labe, which is a classical Greek phrase meaning come and take them. It's attributed to King Leonidas of Sparta as a defiant response to the demand that his soldiers lay down their weapons. Gun rights advocates today have adopted the phrase as a challenge to perceived threats of firearm confiscation. And the knight is supposed to be one of the Spartan knights. And the smaller words, amat victoria curam, are a Latin saying meaning victory loves preparation. I use stick sanders and sandpaper to sand over everything after routering. I have never used silver maple for sign making before, so I wasn't sure if the paint would bleed or not. So I put on some sanding sealer, which will help prevent the bleed. Some folks do this to their wood before routering, but I like to do it after and then spray it off with air so it doesn't pool. The inside of the box is going to be filled with gun mounting foam, so I just use spray can polyurethane just to protect the wood in that area. I used blue tape to mask off any areas that I didn't want the black paint to enter, like natural cracks and knots in the wood. Then I, with the help of Cyclone, sprayed the routered areas with black primer. Then I had to add some more wood to the sides because I changed the design from sliding to the side to sliding down, and I'll explain that more in a bit. After the primer was dry, I removed the tape and started sanding away first with 60 grit, then 80, then 100. And again, I went over areas with the stick sanders. Now it was time to add the sliders. These are 14 inch full extension drawer guides. I would have had to special order longer sliders if it was going to slide side to side, but it will take less wall space sliding down and I can use the 14 inch sliders. I used double stick tape to line these up and make sure they were parallel with each other, then fastened them in place with some screws. Then used double stick tape again to align the sign. Then I flipped the whole thing over and fastened the sign to the sliders. I 
was hoping it would work, and it did. What a relief. Husband had the idea to use double roller catches to secure the sign when in the close position, so I added a little block of wood to mount the rollers to, and the catches are mounted to the box. And it's all on the bottom and the back side of the sign where it can't be seen. And it worked out well. had three parts, a one inch thick part, a two inch part, and an egg crate part for a lid. I didn't need the egg crate part, so I put in the one inch section first and the two inch section next. And the two inch section will be custom cut yeah. for the specific weapon going into the case. Hey, look at that. Woo! I used Danish oil natural for the finish. I did the back side first, applying as directed on the can flooding the surface, letting it sit for 15 minutes, flooding again for 15 minutes, then wiping it dry. Then I was excited when it was time to do the front. The Danish oil really brought out that pretty grain and those pretty colors in that silver maple. It mounts on the wall. This one is the, the size it needs to be for a specific weapon that's going inside of it. So I'm gonna have husband come over and help me hold it up while I, we open it and stuff. See how it works. But here's the back. Ah, the back. Oh, I was gonna have you hold it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Perfect. And so it comes down like this, and the weapon goes right in there. And then it goes back up like this. Yay! Thank you, Hub! <laughs> I had the opportunity to deliver this project to the customer. It was great to see how happy he was and how his custom pistol from Black Rain Ordnance fit into the case. This was a challenging project and I had to design it all from scratch. I'm happy it worked out and I'm thrilled that the customer loved it. I have links in the description box below to just about everything that I used in this project, but you can always contact me if you have any questions about something. So thanks for joining me everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye!